It's January 2007. The housing market is way overvalued. Millions of people have stopped paying their mortgages and defaults are rising. But S&P, the biggest credit rating agency, says... The delinquency rates do have people worried, but they're actually within our models. To me, this is the most important scene in the big short because it gets to incentives, the real reason things happen on Wall Street. Today, I'll use this scene to explain, one, why bonds don't trade like stocks, two, what a catalyst is and how they work, three, the dirty secret of capitalism, four, why housing prices got so high, and five, what you need to know whenever you invest. So let's jump right in. Mark Baum, the head of Front Point Partners, has some good news. Foreclosures and mortgage defaults are up, and he short mortgage bonds, which are collections of mortgages. The bonds they shorted should be losing value, and he should be making money. But the market isn't reacting, and the price of bonds isn't falling. Subprime loans go bad, but subprime bonds, which are made up of subprime loans, are more valuable? The bad news isn't getting through to bond investors. Why bonds don't trade like stocks? Mortgage bonds aren't like stocks. Stocks fluctuate constantly as investors assess and reassess their expectations for a company's profitability. Mortgage bonds have a fixed future value and they are highly likely to pay out 100% of that value. And AAA bonds have never defaulted before. So the market is ignoring the bad news about defaults. Somewhere along the line, these Bs and double Bs went from a little risky to dog shit. This is a problem for Front Point because shorting bonds is harder than shorting stocks. Index funds lend stocks cheaply for shorting. It's easy to short stocks. But to short these bonds, Mark Baum and Front Point had to pay Morgan Stanley a lot of money and they have to keep paying to keep the trade going. They want another 1.9 million by market close. What about the ratings agencies? Moody's, S&P, are they downgrading the CDOs? Morgan Stanley's demanding more capital for collateral in case of loss. And if they don't get it, they will close the trade and Front Point will lose all its money. What is a catalyst and how do they work? Baum needs a catalyst, which is an event the market can't ignore. Something like maybe a credit rating agency downgrade of the mortgage bonds. So he goes to S&P, one of the three major credit rating agencies to ask them why they haven't downgraded the bonds. Well, we don't understand why the ratings agencies haven't downgraded subprime bonds since mm. the underlying loans are clearly deteriorating. And Georgia, the S&P rep, says people are concerned about delinquencies, but it's in our model. That means we anticipated these delinquencies, everything is fine. And if everything's fine, the value of the bonds won't decline. So Baum attacks their integrity, saying, Georgia, can you name one time in the past year where you checked the tape and you didn't give the banks the AAA percentage they wanted? So Can't be held responsible for doing shitty and illegal things. What are you, for? No, I am not for. And then we get Georgia a surprising, unexpected, improbable, and very helpful confession. She says, If we don't give them the ratings, they'll go to Moody's. Right down the block. Shocked, I tell you. He says they should be moral for the greater good. You can afford to make less, make less. Time for a newsflash. It's easy to tell someone else to do the right thing for the greater good. But Baum is the one being childish, in my opinion. The three biggest credit rating agencies, Moody's, Fitch and Standard & Poor's are old Wall Street institutions, but they are also for-profit companies. And for-profit companies exist to make money, not to perform public service. And Baum should know this. Which brings us to my favorite line. I wonder what your incentives might be. Is it maybe in your best interest to have the ratings change? Is it, perhaps? How many credit default swaps do you own? Hmm? It doesn't make me wrong. No. It just makes you a hypocrite. And she's absolutely right. Baum wouldn't even be talking with her if it wasn't to make money for himself. And this brings us to the big dirty secret of capitalism. Capitalism is great at making lots of things efficiently and making some people rich, but it's also the reason we have guns, huge SUVs, alcohol, cigarettes, drugs, and climate change. All these things make money, and the people who make money from these things will fight for them. And in this case, the credit rating agencies, like doctors, like almost anybody online, like almost anybody anywhere, has incentives that shape their behavior. And yes, the credit rating agencies were rubber stamping the bonds for the banks that paid them, which is why they never should have been trusted. Perhaps if the credit rating agencies had been paid by the investors buying the bonds, rather than by the banks selling them, we wouldn't have had a housing crisis. They would have had 
had their incentives, the credit rating agency's incentives would have been aligned with the buyer's incentives. And we wouldn't have had so much money available for housing. And if less money had been available for housing, the price of housing would have risen less and we would have had less of a bubble to burst. All that money was available because the credit rating agencies hid the risks, which was in the interest of the bank selling the bonds. Bond investors were looking for extra interest and they naively trusted the rating agencies thinking they weren't adding risk. Well, unfortunately there is no free lunch as we all found out later. What you need to know whenever you invest. So remember caveat emptor, buyer beware. Buyers are responsible for due diligence. Whenever you invest, you should know who's getting paid and how. Is there a commission? Is there a hidden fee? Is there a fee as a percentage of your assets? Or is there a separate fixed fee that you're paying? You must know this. If you're interested more about the housing crisis, check out my video on Margin Call, which is a movie about a crash from the perspective of a bank like Lehman Brothers. It's a great movie. Check it out. Thanks and bye. Not really a joke, but I mean, one of the things I liked best about the scene was the blind Georgia. I felt like this was a setup like the Oracle of Delphi. You know, in Delphi, the oracles were women who sat around in a stinky room full of sulfur and were blind, and they uttered the truth. And in a way, in this movie, Georgia, in her blindness, tells everyone the truth about why things are happening. It's all because of people getting paid. And although, you know, everyone walks away thinking Baum is the hero of the movie, he's not. He's just another guy making a buck. Okay, sell it all.